Yes, Burkle. Yes. 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 Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, I have uh, some news for you. I don't know a lot about female birth control. And um, this may be shocking, uh, considering my carriage and my uh, addiction and the fact that I use the word carriage to uh, describe myself, that I don't have a lot of need to understand female birth control. But I, you know, I took fifth grade maturation class back in uh, Ohio, and we learned the basics, you know, pear-shaped muscle, front to back, can't get pregnant for the first time, et cetera. And, um, I thought I had a vague conception of uh, female birth control, uh, but I saw, which is fine because really all you need for the birth control industry is based upon vague conceptions, but I saw a <laughs> commercial yesterday that rocked me to my core. It is the NuvaRing birth control system. <laughs> Now, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's a series of modern women. They're on the go, and they illustrate their, their point visually so what we know what we're talking about when we talk about the Nuva Ring. They're like spelunking in caves and like making tacos and wearing enormous hoop skirts for no reason. And um, they, they're like, I'm a modern woman. I need a modern solution, as she like arranges donuts in a display case. And then another one's like, I just can't take the routine of pills in a hula hoop factory. And, um, <laughs> And then a woman playing like a sousaphone is like, a pale's gross. I wish there was just something I could put in my vagina for a couple months. <laughs> and then, and then a voice descends. Now there's NuvaRing. And as though an angel floated by and got its halo knocked off, the NuvaRing flies into this woman's hand. And they go, introducing NuvaRing, a soft, comfortable, flexible vaginal ring. I understand what all of those words mean separately. <laughs> but let me tell you, Ohio did not prepare me for the NuvaRing. I'm sitting there, I have no idea how this is working. And the women are loving NuvaRing. They're squishing it like a marshmallow. It's telling them a joke. They're playing like they're Mr. Peanut with a monocle. And I'm like, what is, what is going on? So while they're doing the, the side effects during a, a sequence where NuvaRing and this woman are going out for Manny Petties or whatever, I'm thinking like, what is this? How does this work? I have no idea. Like, if they brought me in for a focus group about NuvaRing, I would say, A, why am I in this focus group? <laughs> they, they, they'd be like, hey, Jess, why don't you, um, here's, a, here's a mannequin, here, use Sheila, and just tell us um, how you think you use the NuvaRing. And I'd be like, well, I guess you um, hang it like a car air freshener, right? Yeah. <laughs> you may want to think about getting a pine-scented one, just to spice things up. Um, but ladies intuitively knew uh, how to use the NuvaRing, but my feminine intuition was spotting a design flaw this whole time, which is that it is a ring, which by definition has a large empty part in the middle through which objects can pass, <laughs> such as sperm or the Lord's hand, if you were educated in Ohio. And um, the, only, the only way that I could have confidence in the Nuva Ring is if it worked like the portal from the movie Stargate, where things went in it and then pfft, another dimension. They were just zapped away <laughs> through time and space. Every ejaculate, pfft, give me liberty or give, pfft. oh my God, what the hell? How many, how many wars have been needlessly fought over Nuva Ring? That's what I ask it. But, um, I did, I did some more research uh, because I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, I'm unemployed. Just kidding, I'm a professional comedian. And um, I did some research, and it shouldn't shock anyone to know that the trailblazers of modern birth control were French prostitutes, which, because uh, for them, it's like the Manhattan Project. They had to figure this baby out. They're like, we got to get down to business about this. And uh, so French prostitutes, what they used to do was they used to put a tiny pebble inside of their uterus as a form of birth control, which begs the question, how did they figure that one out? You know, the, it's a carriage kick up a stone really hard in the hoop skirt. Oh, that's why the hoop skirt's in the Nuva Ring commercial. The, um, I feel like the, the, the French whores all got together and they're like, ladies, we need to figure this out. They get together in like, a, I guess a stadium would hold them all, I don't know. And uh, they're like, anybody, suggestions, suggestions. And one of them was like, yesterday I found a stone. It was so beautiful. I wanted to keep it safe. So I put it in my, how do you say, portemonnaie de maladie venereale, and that's where it stayed. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. That's not really how it happened. Um, <laughs> well, that'd have been funny though. Um, I, I did. I, I did further. Well, that's why. Uh, that's why to this day, uh, prostitutes enjoy precious stones. So uh, think about that the next time you see a K Jewelers commercial, huh? <laughs> A diamond is forever, because I, I dare you ladies to fish it out. That's what I would say. Um, that Jane Seymour open heart necklace is going to present problems. I, I, looked, I looked into the, the, the stone myth, because I was like, I'm not buying this. This isn't true. This isn't true. And I looked, and it turns out that it is true. It started in ancient Arabia, where uh, they used to put uh, rocks inside of a camel's uterus to prevent it from having camel babies. And um, when I said that last week at a, a set, a man goes, well, why wouldn't you want baby camels? <laughs> and that man hit the nail on the head, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I feel like these guys came back into the village, they're like, everybody, everybody, we, we, we figured this out. If you put rocks inside of a camel's uterus, it doesn't have camel babies. And everyone in the village is like, well, we kind of use camels like cars and things. Like, we enjoy camels. And then a more intelligent person was like, why were you putting rocks inside of a camel's uterus? <laughs> He's like, well, um, Ahmed really wanted to play skee-ball, so we improvised. I call it two humps and a lump. And uh, I'm sure it's on the Lawrence of Arabia deleted scenes. You can find it there somewhere. But I mean, stones used to be, and, and rocks, stones and rocks were the solution to uh, everything once upon a time. Prehistoric man, it was just, it was a, a go-to answer. It was like, I'm cold. Well, uh, why don't you, uh, you know, slap those two rocks together and see what happens. It's like, what a heat-filled byproduct coming out of this. And it's, I'm hungry, I wish I could eat that animal. It's like, well, why don't you, uh, you know, throw a rock at it. And, it's like, Boom. <laughs> and you invented hunting. But, um, I, I, and we all saw the Flintstones, right? I mean, they had rocks all over. Fred worked in a quarry, for crying out loud. So I feel like the, um, Wilma was definitely on the stone system, as I'm calling it now. And there was probably a very special episode of the Flintstones. <laughs> That was too risque at the time to air. But now we can delve it out of the archives and we can see, and, you know, Fred comes home beleaguered and barefoot to the, to the cave and, and Wilma's there crying and he roots through the night and he finds the little sack of rocks and he's, you know, Wilma, what is this? And she's like, I don't, I don't know, Fred. Like, what are you yabba dabba doing? And she's like, I just, we're not ready. We're not ready. And he's like, no system is foolproof. And nine months later, they have a little girl named Pebbles. <laughs> Thank you. See you all later. Bye. Give Jess a hand. Jess Bernal. Yay!